All right guys, Travis here with Debtors Dirt Bikes. So on my Husqvarna FX350, notice the front brake pedal is getting a little, um, our brake lever is getting pretty spongy. So I will show you guys how to rebuild it. Um, here's the kit from All Balls. I recommend a factory, you get what you pay for, but I mean, it was really expensive. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out the All Balls kit. Uh, very basic setup. Of course, you got a piston in here. This is what's called your master cylinder. And this is what applies the pressure, long story short. So, I'll show you how I tear it okay, down. So first, we're gonna pop that little boot off. This guy right here. And doing this one-handed. So I already have it popped off, but what I did is I took a right angle pick. And what I did is I went inside and then I pried it on out of there. Because if you notice, this is where it's soft. And this guy is hard on the round the outside. So the way this stays in there is this gets basically pressed in. So you just gotta unpress it out. You don't, you know, so be careful not to scratch along inside here. So just take your time with it. Carefully try to pry it out. It will take some force though. Uh, but yeah, you don't wanna try to scuff that up. If it makes it easier, just rip this boot off like this part. That way you can clearly see what you have going on. And then you wanna get this tool in there and then pry it out that way. So next, I don't have my nice yeah. snap ring pliers are still at work. So next we're gonna pull out the snap okay. ring. So got the snap ring out. This is also called the Jesus clip because when I go twang, go Jesus. Now you just take a good pair of needle nose, slide it right on out. It's a very simple setup guys. Um, then I'd get some brake clean, clean out the bore, clean out inside of there. Keep track where you put your parts. Of course, this was the little pin that it applies from your brake lever on that way. So I'm gonna clean it, put it back together. Very simple. Okay, so I opened up the box, or I mean, if I took the new one, I laid that all out, based in the same order, it comes back in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Q-tip and dop, dip it in. So I'm using the 5.1, you can also use dot four. And then I'm gonna basically nicely lube up the o-rings as well as inside the bore okay so now i got my piston in there i got it all lubricated up keep in mind guys uh these seals are faced that way because when you apply the brake that's what's applying our pressure so make sure when you push this into that cylinder you give it a nice little wiggle to make sure that seal goes in correctly and doesn't like try to pull back or anything like that. You shouldn't have to press on this very hard. If you're having to push on it really hard, there's something caught, something's not right. So next we're gonna put on the new snap ring and then we're gonna put the new, um... oh, you gave me a present, thank you. Damn it. Um, where was I? Okay, so some of these bikes did have this spring in it my particular bike did not, so if your bike has it in there, put that in there. So next, snap ring. So and now we got our snap ring in. Uh, you'll definitely want to put it in a vise. Push that piston down while you try to get that snap ring in there. It can be a little difficult because the snap ring that goes on here, it likes to slide all the way down so we have a slight little uh, extra nipple on there. So get it down close. And then if it's not want to go in, what you'll do is, as long as if you start one part of the snap ring, you can walk it and tap it on around down. Make sure it's fully snapped in. Now we're just gonna put on the boot. I'm gonna put the boot in. I tuck the boot inside of a 13 millimeter socket, and that'll give me a nice, um, you know, tool to try to press this in. You should be able to just pop it in by hand, get it fully seated around. Okay, so now that's in there. You can't really see, but you want to make sure it's fully pressed all the way around. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. So now here's our push pin. It's a good time to I can't really see it, but clean it up, lube it up, put enough lube on the tip just to make sure it actually gets on the piston. I'm gonna put that in there. Get a few spins. I'll probably have to go back and do that, but I'm gonna so I'm gonna put that lip back on. 
That's how you rebuild your Brembo front brake master cylinder. Uh, last thing, guys. So yes, the kit does come with new um, crush washers to tighten it back down. You can look up the torque spec, but good and tight's good and tight. A uh, big tip for bleeding and restarting the front brakes is start with a gravity bleed. Most of the time, guys, I can do just a gravity bleed. What a gravity bleed is, once you put your reservoir back in, take off the reservoir, fill it up, crack your bottom bleed line. I like using a little hose, make less of a mess, and it will gravity bleed most of the time. But to, to start the system, definitely do a gravity bleed because with, with everything having so much air in there, you're just gonna be pumping air and probably not getting any um, fluid down as well as you're probably just gonna make more air bubbles. So start with a gravity bleed. All right, guys, so one last tip. Uh, these masters can be quite a bugger to try to bleed. So you see your white diaphragm inside of there. You almost see like a clear bubble inside of that plastic diaphragm, and that's the bubble that's really hard to get out. So what I've found is usually if I turn the wheel this way, lean it, give it a few pumps, lean it this way, try to work that air bubble out of there.